In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, where should I site my fire alarm detectors? Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of fire alarms. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate to prove you've completed the course. In previous videos, we looked at which rooms in the property smoke alarms should be placed, but does it matter where in the room it is? Can it be mounted on a wall? What about a long corridor or a pitched roof? Well, let's answer some of those questions. First of all, it's important to bear in mind that any detectors in a grade D system, which is what we're covering in this series of videos, are point detectors. What that means is that they are only detecting smoke or heat or carbon monoxide at the position they are installed. So to successfully detect any of those, the smoke or heat or CO needs to be present at the detector. This is why smoke and heat detectors have a maximum distance that they can cover. It's not about the sensitivity or the quality of the detector, it's about how the smoke or heat travels around the space and how long it will take to reach the detector. So we need to think about the position of the device in this context. Smoke detectors like this one from BG Electrical therefore have a detection range of 7.5 meters. Imagine this as the radius of a circle centered on the detector. This means that if a fire starts anywhere within that circle, the smoke will eventually travel to the detector and trigger it before the fire has made it impossible for someone to escape the room or property. Now, in most domestic properties, this means that if a room is less than 15 meters from corner to corner, one detector in that space should be sufficient, assuming the detector is in the middle of the room, of course. This is a pretty whopping distance for a room, so unless you're in some kind of grand designs type property, it's pretty rare to need more than one smoke per room. If, however, you've got a room with a long, narrow corridor, more than 15 meters, you'll need to use enough smoke detectors so that each one is no more than 15 meters from the next one. If the corridor is more than two meters wide, the detectors will need to be closer together to avoid dead spots. When installing heat detectors, like these ones from BG Electrical, the distance they can cover is smaller, with a circle of radius 5.3 meters. Again, this isn't about the quality of the detector, you won't find a brand that offers a higher detection distance than this because it's about how the heat moves through the space to the detector. Detectors should be at least 300 mil from a wall as the edge formed by the wall and ceiling disrupts the airflow around the space and smoke will not get close enough to a detector to trigger it. This distance should also be maintained from a light fitting unless it's been proven that being close will have no effect on the detection ability of the device. A common question related to this is, can a smoke alarm be mounted vertically on a wall? Ceiling mounting is preferable, but where it's impracticable to ceiling mount, the answer is yes, it can be wall mounted as long as certain conditions are met. The practical guide to grade D fire alarm systems states that if it's in a hallway, then it doesn't exceed 10 meters in length and or breadth. The area of the space protected does not exceed 50 square meters. The top of the sensor within the detector is between 150 mil and 300 mil below the ceiling. The bottom of the sensor within the detector is above the level of any door opening. And finally, critically, that the manufacturer's data permits such a location. Looking at the manufacturer's information for this smoke detector, you can see that it does allow the installation of a smoke alarm in this position. Make sure though that the sensor, which is not central in this smoke, sits within the recommended distances. Going back to ceiling mounting, the sensing element of the smoke should be between 25 millimeters and 600 millimeters from the ceiling surface. And a heat detector should be between 25 mil and 150 mil. That's why most detectors have a backing plate that achieves this minimum distance. Speaking of 600 mil and ceilings, if you're working in a space that has beams that jut down into the room, this can also disrupt the airflow and therefore the movement of smoke around a room. If the depth of the beam is greater than 10% of the ceiling height, it should be treated as a wall, so detectors should be provided on both sides of the beam. Or, if the beam is less than 600 mil in depth, a detector should be placed on the underside of the beam. This regulation seems to confuse people a bit, so let's do an example to figure it out. If I've got a room that is 2,400 millimetres high and my beam is 250 millimetres deep, then it may at first seem to require detectors either side of the beam, as it's more than 10% of the depth of the beam. This would be an acceptable solution. If, however, the beam is less than 600 mil deep, I have another option, and that is to mount the detector on the beam itself. This keeps the detector in line with the requirement for the sensor to be less than 600 mil from the ceiling. If the beam is over 600 mil deep, I'll need to plump for the first option of a detector either side. 
If it is less than 10% of the depth of the room, I can have just one detector, as the smoke will not be too badly disrupted by the beam. However, in these other cases, detectors should not be installed closer to the beam than twice the depth of the beam, or 500mm, whichever is less, as the depth of the beam will impact on the clear air pocket between the beam and the ceiling. If you're installing the smoke to a pitched roof, you'll need to make sure that the smoke is installed no more than 600mm from the apex of the pitched roof, and heat detectors no more than 150mm. An actual advantage to a pitched roof is that for every one degree of slope, you can space your detectors 1% further apart. This is because the pitch has the effect of gathering the smoke and hot air into a smaller volume of space and funneling it towards the detectors more effectively. So if you've got a slope of 10 degrees, you can space the detectors 10% further apart. So for smokes, that would give a detection radius of 8.25 meters or 16.5 meters between detectors. This is only true, however, up to a maximum of 25%. It's also interesting to note that BS5389-6 states that where smoke alarms are installed, no bedroom doors should be further than three meters from the nearest smoke alarm, that at least one smoke detector should be sighted in each hallway or corridor and on each main landing of every staircase. In hallways or corridors exceeding 7.5 meters in length, no point within the hallway or corridor should exceed 7.5 meters from the nearest detector that at least one smoke detector should be located between every bedroom and every other room in the dwelling, other than a toilet, bathroom, or shower room. In single-storey dwellings protected by a single detector, the detector should be as close as possible to living accommodation. However, where such rooms are located on both sides of any bedroom, a smoke detector should be sighted midway between the doors to these rooms. And that, in a multi-storey house, at least one smoke detector should be located on the ground floor between each staircase and every room other than a toilet, bathroom or shower room. However, where such rooms are located on both sides of a staircase, a smoke detector should be sighted midway between the doors to these rooms. When installing detectors to cover spaces near staircases, it's important not to locate them over the stairwell as they need to remain accessible for maintenance and testing. Placing them over a stairwell creates unnecessary and dangerous access challenges. And as we've stated in previous videos, if the loft space includes an inverter for a PV system or a boiler or a UPS, then it will need detection coverage for category LD1 and LD2 systems. And that concludes this series of videos. If you found it helpful, why not click the link in the description below to complete our free training package on this subject to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.